uh, our ancient church has a 3,000 judo Christian history. Because before accepting Christianity in Ethiopia, uh, we have accepted the Old Testament religion. And we have practiced that for 1,000 years. To be exact, for 992 years before Christ. Then we were able to accept Christianity on the first half of the first century, that is in 34 AD. We have 40 million members. We have also 35,000 parish churches. We have 400,000 clergy people. We have sacramental clergy, those who live in the parish and live with the people, uh, administer the sacraments and preach them and counsel them. We have adapters, they are the very scholarly, learned people, the children or the students of Yared, which is a very unique tradition in our country uh, and throughout the world. So they have, we have those people on one side. On the other side, we have also people who have committed to live with the ascetical life, with the spiritual life, in a communal way. So Ethiopia is one of the oldest Christian churches which accepted and adapted monasticism. Uh, from the 5th century up to now, we have many monasteries in Ethiopia about 1,000 monasteries. These monasteries have been the backbones for our Christian church in Ethiopia because it is in the monastery you have the learnings of the schools, of the old traditional schools we have in our country, uh, the different, in different fields in the monastic life. And it is the members of the monastic community who have been coming out from the monasteries and going and founding another monasteries in another area. And uh, in that sense, they have expanded monastic, monasticism. We have another monastery or monasteries in Jerusalem. Uh, the monastery in Jerusalem uh, was there since the fourth century of Christian Eddy. Uh, but this land, this property has been given to us by King Solomon to Queen of Sheba. That is 992 years before Christ. Because how do we know? This is because recorded in the Holy Bible. In the first book of Kings, and the second chronicles, we find a very lengthy details that tells King Solomon has given to Queen of Shiva all what she has asked him. At that time, it was not a monastery, it's a piece of land which has been given to her to stay as long as she was staying in Jerusalem. Ever since, Ethiopia never left from this, and they made it a monastic community. And ever since, we have been there. When I was released after uh, six and a half years, I was kept under house arrest for one whole year again. And at that time, I have appealed to the government uh, that I was uh, in prison for so many X years, and now I am released and I am unable to help and to serve my country, uh, would I be given the permission to go to uh, complete my studies to the country where I have been? If it's not possible, uh, may I be put back in the prison where I was because I had uh, congregations to preach there. Mm -hmm. so that was the question. I, you were granted the... And the I was granted. The permission. To my surprise, I was never sure that it will happen, but uh, I received a response that I could go uh, to 
the countries where I have appealed. Mm -hmm. And I was granted the permission and I left and I continued my studies there. Earlier I was at Yale University Divinity School. I got my first paper and then the second time I was at Princeton uh, working for my PhD and where I was interrupted uh, or being called by the late patriarch Abuna Teoflos. So I came um, in the middle of my studies. work studies. Uh, then I asked to go back and that's where I went. The university was ready to welcome me. I went and continued my studies at Princeton. I was in exile for 10 years. Ethiopia was down deep in my heart. What else could I have deeper in my heart? Because I am nothing outside of Ethiopia. I am an Ethiopian. My life, my honor, my respect or anything else that I could expect to get it from other people is only by being Ethiopian. I cannot change my Ethiopianism. So that was the main issue of my whole life. So my life was the life of Ethiopia. And in my capacity, had I had a bigger capacity that I could have done something to rescue or to do something for Ethiopia, I would have done it. But within my capacity, at least to be willing and ready and to be an Ethiopian, wherever I am. Uh, at this moment when I was in, in the United States, uh, many refugees had been coming. Many Ethiopians had been uh, running away from the turmoil that there was here, and they were coming to the United States. It was a strange country to different people, different environments, in every way. And so, uh, besides, since they were forced to leave their own land, they were not prepared as to where they were going. And so they are more lost than anyone else. So they needed someone to talk to them in their own language. They needed someone to bring the destitute or the displaced people together. And I have to find a way. I have to find a way how to survive and come to the better world. So in order to do that, what I have been doing was I established the church, uh, several churches, but especially on the first church, uh, I brought the people into the church. I invited several people. Every week I asked the, those who come to the church to bring more people. And the young people, because they were outside of their country, what they were thinking was hopeless. But there was a, a preaching and encouragement to have the dignified life, getting married. What was held in Ethiopia was established there to make them believe that they are at home. They are, after all, they are outside of their country, but they are together with their own uh, uh, tradition with their own belief and so the ceremony that was taking place for the marriage itself very colorful as it is in Ethiopia mm -hmm. it was done in New York it was done in uh, Texas it was done everywhere so people began to feel normal I always remind them regardless how successful you are in this country even if you stayed 100 years after 100 years the native will ask you where is your country and that is a very painful. And so not to leave their country, not to forget their country, and that the history of their country is something that very soundful in the world. It's not less than anybody else, if not better. I am a pastor. I'm a pastor um, sitting at the top office or the top chair. I could be uh, said the pastor of the pastor may be uh, someone who can serve more. I am not there to sit idly and wait for everyone to come to me. I am to go to reconcile and to comfort and to help them in any advice that uh, what the church gives to the community. 
Many people expect you to do many things for them. If you are in a position, you can do it. If you don't have the capacity to do it, you feel down and you feel sorry. The people chant before you and think and make all, all speeches and hoping that you could do something for them or hoping that you are doing something great. And so you feel small. When you look at the situation, am I doing what the people are expecting me? But what is my obligation? My obligation is to do the best to the utmost uh, uh, capacity uh, so that I could meet the need of the people. So this is the one challenging situation. The other one is a joy that I feel here. When I see many people uh, of different uh, genders, many people of different age, many people of different capacities, even of their classification, learned people, unlearned people, all rushing to the church. The church today is um, the people's church. The nature of the church is, by the way, the people's church. Uh, there might have been a time when the church was affiliated itself with somebody else. Mm -hmm. But at this time, it is practicing what it is to be. One does not work in order to get a award. One works what he believes in himself. It's something good for the society, something good for the world, for the peaceful uh, world that we live in. And so one has the responsibility, every one of us, one has the responsibility. It doesn't matter how little it is, but it has to be expressed. Excuse me. It has to be expressed uh, in uh, whatever uh, ways of doing in that manner. So uh, we have been uh, encouraging the refugees to come. There seems to be no ground for man to quarrel in the world in which we dwell because God has made the world bountiful so that there would be enough to share for all in love and not be greedy. Since man is by nature a social being, tribes, should learn to live with each other. Communities should realize that they cannot thrive by running at each other's throats. Nations must know that war, the mother of destruction, cruelty, misery, and all sorrows, never yields progress. It only produces the refugee, the limpless and the hopeless. It is essential, therefore, that mankind fully understand the harmonious divine order of life and practice peaceful coexistence if the plight of refugees is to be elevated. My involvement with the refugees precedes my being a prisoner. Uh, to be a refugee is uh, to lose every dear things to one, everything. Simply to be left uh, spending on the air without having anything to hold on. You are displaced from your own country, from your own environment. You are in a place where you have no similar language, similar colors, similar cultures. You are not counted as a citizen and will be considered to be included in the normal life with the society that you are in so it's an empty state state i know in many other countries 
who are very young, two years, two hundred years old, they just show you all these things and and tell you so many fantastic stories to make you impress the two hundred years. Two hundred years is what kind of time to the Ethiopian three thousand years? Uninterrupted history. So the heritage we have are something that we can claim at least from the point we have started our history in writings three thousand years ago. So it is not the duty and obligation only of the simple uh, clergy people of caring and of uh, protecting such kind of treasures. There has to be a total commitment of all the Ethiopian people. Yeah. Concern. Yes. Ethiopian yes. people as a whole concern. Why? It has to be left only to the defense of the simple clergyman. Uh, we should not lose sight of what of how much these clergy people have been contributing to their own country. Since the beginning, since the time, all the time we were isolated from the rest of the world, it is these simple monks, these simple priests, without any salary, monthly salary, preserved all these things and brought them up to our modern time today. It should, it should uh, continue with a strong commitment to preserve our, our heritage. I am continuing in my public appearances uh, to see the uh, harmonious life with the Eritreans who are here and uh, with the peaceful solutions, the demands of the peaceful solutions that we would wish all together and send messages in the way we can and then at the same time to be very prayer, prayerful people prayerful people. We have to beg God. The day they sent, they bombed some of our uh, uh, brothers and sisters in the north, uh, then that evening we declared a prayer and um, uh, time. Uh, people responded very well. We all were uh, doing these prayerful events and we are thankful to God. At least no danger has continued until this time. Even so, we, our conscience is not free. We are still with full of anxieties. Believe me, my brother, this is a war where the government is very much aware, aware out of their experiences. They are not willing to see any distractions among these uh, brothers and sisters. They have been there from the beginning of history together. It's only latter incidences made all these slight separations. But they are one people. They have been one people from the beginning of history. And uh, I don't think it will be any, anything will be rejoicing for our people. And so we should all understand this. We should not do any harmful things to any of our brothers and sisters, Eritreans who are here, uh, just simply out of emotion. Believe me, this, all this will pass away. There will be a time where we all will sit together on the same table. And we don't want to, to see a feeling that will be ashamed of what we have done during this difficult time. I know we as human beings, we plan and we make a program to do this and to do that. But there is something that we have forgotten. People like us who plan in this way, they cut 